Welcome to the Bumblecast. I'm your host, Ian Flynn, the Bumble King, and joining me as always is my Bumble co-host, Kyle, JCRB Kraus. I am always here. You can't get rid of me. No matter nope. how hard you try, I'm stuck. He's a permanent fixture. I can't leave. Like Bolt I... to the chair. <laughs> At this point, I'm pretty sure I am, like, uh required he is more bumblecast than man now <laughs> twisted and evil <laughs> well i mean have you listened to this show it is very twisted and evil that's okay we'll allow it no i mean part of it is the input we get so many questions from our patrons over at patreon.com slash bumblecast kofi.com slash bumblecast and our youtube members what are we supposed to do with these questions not answer them i mean we probably shouldn't answer some of them but you know what we, we do it anyway 2020 yeah i know <laughs> we do it anyway uh because well you know well we can have a little better discretion going forward on some of them but you know you eh. you live and you learn you grow you change you adapt you evolve Eh, really you should be judging the people who ask the questions not us i mean it's not our fault <laughs> but we're not going to pass judgment on you for passing judgment on us we're going to answer these questions starting with allison s post reboot question what would the battlebird armada think of bird washers <laughs> stationary targets <laughs> I mean, yeah. They're 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 just standing there looking at us. Do, do they see the cannons turning in the direction? Yes, sir. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> does does that also count for po- for pre reboot? Like, I mean, they're cause... fairly universal. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, I was gonna say pretty much. Why not both? <laughs> oh, that's a majestic bug combustor. Look, it's coming right for us. Ah! <laughs> Listen to that beautiful call. <laughs> Channeling a little bit of Starline in there. Weird. Yeah, well. Starline is the bird watcher. Ironic considering he's a bird. He's not a bird. Whatever fits the bill. But <laughs> Alphamon or you can ask a question. While Nagus was perfectly comfortable using the power of a Chaos Emerald, after reboot, he seemed to hold some sort of disdain towards them, calling them cursed terrors in one issue. Exactly what changed to make him see such gems of power as more trouble than they're worth? Uh, I'd have to go back and double check my notes. I think this is kind of lost Hedgehog's Tales territory, but I think the implication, or the intention, rather, was part of the grander new backstory to everything and what happened to the trolls as a people and how they viewed the Chaos Emeralds. Uh, I think that's where I was going with it anyway. Uh, when I sit down and research to put that together, we'll all find out together. <laughs> Those hedgehog tales are still lost and never find the tale. Never find, never find any hedgehog tales. <sighs> well, Andrew D has a question. So with a sequel for the Super Mario Brothers movie confirmed to be in the works, what do you want to see in it as well as a potential greater Nintendo cinematic universe? Since the upcoming Zelda movie that is live action was supposedly in the works for over a decade, I'm assuming a CG Nintendo Cinematic Universe wasn't on anyone's mind at the time. Thus, my hopes that we will eventually get a separate CG Zelda film to be part of this hypothetical CG Nintendo Cinematic Universe in a similar manner to how DC still makes movies like The Joker that are not part of their cinematic universe. Uh, what do I want from a Mario sequel? Maybe an actual story? <laughs> uh, I that, that that's That's a low blow. I know there is a story in there. Maybe a better focused story. I mean, it's gorgeous. Yes. No, no denying that. And there's a lot of fun moments. It is scatterbrained as all get out. And the celebrity stunt casting is a crutch that trips it up more than it supports itself. So I mean, aside from Jack Black as Bowser, I mean, that's an we inspired... knew that was going to be fine. We knew that was going to be fine. That's an that's an inspired choice. But everyone else. Eh... Well, uh... Chris Pratt did fine as Mario. Uh, shoot, I don't. Charlie Day Luigi more. was all right. It was pretty. Yeah, good. he did fine. Who, who was Kamek? Because he nailed that. That was great. Uh, hmm. Keith Michael Richardson. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, there we. Yeah, an actual yeah. voice actor. Haha. Yes. Yes. Go figure. And uh, who was Toad Peach? They they were fine. I mean, Seth Rogen, we knew what we were going to get, and even that was kind of disappointing. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like him as Donkey Kong just because it's like, what? <laughs> granted, granted, they didn't give him a lot to work with, but I oh. uh, hope they paid the long-distance bill for what was phoned in. <laughs> I mean, I think that's 
probably why I kind of liked it because it was just so lazy. <laughs> like, <sighs> damn, <laughs> really? I forget who try. it was with. I forget who the cast is Cranky Kong, but that was a misfire of epic. Oh, Morgan. that was Awful. bad. That was bad. Yeah, yeah, that was no good. Sorry, sorry, Cranky but, fans. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I would imagine if they're going for the most recognizable faces, we would see Daisy, Wario, and Waluigi next up. Maybe. Uh, I think you might be able to do something fun if you brought in Tatanga, make him the central villain, and have a Mario Bowser team up. I mean, really, that should be more of an X not story, but I don't expect them to dig that deeply. Yeah. Granted, yeah. granted, they did do Spike and they did a bunch of call outs and little loving nods to the Mario series and Nintendo as a whole, but they were largely superficial. That's why I'm being a cranky old man about it. So I don't know. I we'll we'll see. I, my expectations aren't particularly high for it, but it will be very pretty. That much is for sure. Suggestion I'm getting is Keanu Reeves as Yoshi. <laughs> Bring ha. <laughs> Somebody please get this Yoshi a gun. <laughs> Maybe don't do that. <laughs> as for a greater cinematic universe, I'm... No. This is how bad it's gotten. I kind of don't want it I anymore. I don't. <laughs> I know, I don't either. I don't I don't like want if you to... brought this idea up twenty years ago, I would be yes, all of it, bring it all in and now it's like no, can can we have just smaller stories now? Can we just have standalone solid good movies? I want my Mario to be street level, which is hilariously ironic. <laughs> and I don't know. I feel like you could do other animated Disney uh Disney Nintendo property movies, but to get the right tone, I don't see how they would cross over properly unless it is a kind of Smash Brothers thing where it there is no there's a just broad adventurous tone. You know, you, you, you compare the reveals of like Sora to the reveals of Ridley and it's like a mm, little bit of tonal distance. <laughs> the reveals of Sephiroth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want a cinematic Nintendo universe to be perfectly honest. No. Let 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 if you're gonna do Nintendo films, let them be solid standalone films. I am so scared of that Link mo- that Legend of Zelda movie. That's... It has all the problems already baked in. Maybe I'll be pleasantly surprised, but I am not optimistic. It's terrifying. That's that's a There's terrifying n- prospect. Nobody attached to that inspires confidence. It is a terrifying prospect. I'm 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 not really feeling it. I'm not. Or shoot, do the whole crossover Smash Brothers film and it's live action link with CGI Mario. Mm. Have them both played by Chris Pratt, why not? <laughs> <laughs> they would cast Link as live action. They would cast Chris Pratt as live action Link, wouldn't they? <sighs> no. No. Link's gonna be freaking tom holland or something see i like tom holland i'd be i'd be okay with that just give him a solid script uh, oh man oh man so there's there's so many there's so many people in the chat screaming no but then one person screams yes what's really gonna be- <laughs> like well i mean all right what's really gonna hurt is when they cast the rock as ganondorf <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they you could do they yeah. could do worse. <laughs> they could do worse. I mean, they could do way better, but they could also do worse. They could do Chris Pratt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they could do Jared Leto as <laughs> Link. No thanks. Oh, man. You know what? Uh, I will pay actual theater ticket price though if we have Jack Black tingle because I'm in. <laughs> like that. If I, anyone I, is going to put on the spandex and scream Kulu Limpa and sell it, it's going to be him. Yeah, so. yeah. I would only. Ah, oh, jeez, no, no. I, I don't. Ah, no, 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 no. I would only. I would only allow Link to speak if he talks like he did in the 90s Zelda cartoon. See, that's where I'm afraid they're going to mine from first and foremost. 
I will only allow that. If otherwise, oh, or he speaks like CDI's link. Yeah, I will only allow it if he does either of those. If he does, yes, if he does not speak like either of them, I don't want it. Meanwhile, Ian's over there cringing. Oh yeah, thinking how interesting it would be if they like invented their own form of Hylian sign language mm. and just let him be mute. Wouldn't that be neat? <laughs> they would never do it. I know. I know. Unfortunately. All right. Let's move on to this question from Ann Tales. Here's a shipping and power scaling question I hope you'll enjoy. <laughs> Tales and Cosmo and Knuckles and Rouge go to a theme park for a double date, wherein they participate in the ultimate challenge. Eat their own large bucket of cheese curds, followed by riding all 10 roller coasters in succession without vomiting. Using your knowledge of their traits, stats, and abilities, which couple comes out on top? This almost sounds like a lyric from a Weird Al song. <laughs> Very like well a lost good. verse from Albuquerque. So then I ate a bucket of cheese curds and rode all ten roller coasters and didn't throw up. <laughs> In Albuquerque. I can anyway. tell you there's not ten roller coasters in Albuquerque. I'm not sure there's even one. <laughs> I have to check, but I, there's not ten. Uh, for this, I'm assuming Knuckles and Rouge win by default because I don't know if Cosmo can actually eat cheese curds. <laughs> Tails would really worry about losing it all in front of her and embarrassing himself, and she would very comfortingly say, don't do anything you're not comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I like you just the way you are. And then he that's his out. <laughs> and you expect Rouge, a woman of such poise and dignity, to eat a bucket of cheese curds? Are you kidding me? So Knuckles is going to do it. He'll do it on a dare. And he may actually make it all through all 10 roller coasters. He'll be green to the gills, but he'll make it. So they win. <laughs> uh, he'll be greener than Cosmo. Mm -hmm. Oh, he feels it in his feet. <laughs> oh, boy. Just what we need. Knuckles to be green again. Yeah. Good job, Ian. You've done it. Here's one from Arc Beetle. Beach Party of Three. Participants. Perfect Chaos, Solaris, and Perfect Dark Gaia. How it goes. No, oh, it's gone. Beach is gone, planet's gone, sun is gone, concept of beach and planet are gone. <laughs> perfect chaos and perfect chaos alone gets rid of the beach. Just like, <laughs> wipe out. Yeah. <laughs> There's no more beach left when you get perfect chaos involved. <laughs> I'm being asked by our thumbnail artist who is wearing the bikini. <laughs> Perfect chaos. Okay, good. Who else is going to rock it? Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, Dark Guy just doesn't have the figure for it, and Solaris doesn't have any legs, so, you know, perfect chaos. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, we'll see if that one makes the thumbnail. Hmm. Hmm. Perfect Chaos doesn't have legs either. Wait, shut up. <laughs> we got one from Ava Arctic, and this one has a uh, visual component. So for the people listening live, I will link that in the chat. And for the people who are you listening on YouTube, I don't know. I'll figure something out. Might be in the description. Might be on screen right now if you're on YouTube. I don't know. You'll see. You'll figure it out. Anyway. So, Ian, I know you can't talk about fan ideas, but there is one I came across that's crazy. Just look at this wild fan idea. How could someone th think of a crazy fan idea like this? It feels like something a certain weasel would market. As someone high up on the Sonic Totem, what are your thoughts on this fan idea? So, I'll just read through the description here. Okay. To be clear. Uh, several have asked about the dehumidifier power cord. I can solve this with a power strip attached to a model train whose speed is perfectly matches the ceiling fan. Someone said the model train may short circuit if it gets wet, but I can shield it with more plants. There are plants suspended from the ceiling fan. Okay, but what if a leaf falls on the tracks? For this, I can attach a broom to the rotating plant platform, and the broom will chase the train to or be chased by it, depending on your pers uh, perspective, I suppose. Model trains will occasionally get stuck and need to be jostled, so I have added a caboose upon which my phone will be docked under a cute little umbrella that will vibrate the train every time someone responds to the thread saying the plan is needlessly elaborate which is frequent and i see no problem with this i mean yeah this 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 fan idea is great i, I mean it's drawn to scale 
I'm sure it's perfectly balanced. Those plants can't weigh that much. I'm sure you wouldn't throw the balance off of anything. Oh, this is perfectly fine. Sound reasoning. A plus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no problems here. It, it even says choo choo on it. I mean, what? what you, yeah, that's a detail right there. That's a good detail. Can't wait to buy the entire kit on Tinmu. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you meant Timu. No, this is off brand Timu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, wow. D- discount back, Alley Timu. <laughs> <laughs> Ian validated a fan idea. Ah! Balefire Bobshell has a question. Maybe it's just me, but I've noticed that back in the Archie days, it wasn't uncommon to see characters with quote-unquote normal names. Antoine, Sally, Nicole, Bernadette, etc. However, that seems to have ceased with the IDW change. Instead, they all seem to have names related to aspects of either their species or abilities. Tangle, Whisper, Surge, etc. Might be peeking behind the curtain a bit too much. So if it is, just say so and move on. But is there a particular rule along these lines to naming characters in the IDW franchise? Or if you can elucidate on the matter, what exactly goes into deciding what a new character's name is going to be? I don't think there's a rule. Or at least I've not run into one. Um, I mean, the... vanilla is not a specifically a rabbit-themed name. No, but... Uh... Her character in concept is subordinate to cream, cream. unless she's part of the greater joke. Vanilla cream, cream cheese, chocolate cream. It it all comes from cream and her central joke. Yes. Uh, most of those normal names were kind of grandfathered in by different writers with different perspectives on Sonic. Once the next kind of generation came in, you know, me, Tracy Yardley, Evan Stanley, Aaliyah Baker, all, uh, yeah, all of us kind of in that new wave of push, we were aiming for more actual Sonic sounding names, something that would fit within the universe and make sense within the brand. That's why we had Razor the shark, you know, and Pearly the Manta and echo so, the so dolphin. Like, yes. We had to be real <laughs> careful with that one. <laughs> worth it though that that carried over into idw where you know we are much much more game aligned that you know we want any new characters to feel like they would fit with the sonic universe as it's known so you have rough and tumble the skunks not i don't know vladimir and sputnik i I don't know (laughs) jim bob and joe bob yeah (laughs) butch and cassidy whatever it's you know, we want them to feel like Sonic characters and not extras. I mean, I mean, Sally's kind of the exception of the rule since Sally, it's as a name itself can mean, I believe it translates to princess or royalty or something like that. And Acorn and she is a chipmunk or ground squirrel or something that was never really defined early on. You know, Bunny, the rabbit, that, that one's kind of right there. That's really on so, the nose. <laughs> and Rotor Walrus is already there kind of to Boomer as well. So, to their credit, they fit in. Antoine's really the outlier there. For the most part, yes, yes. But uh, it, it's it's not a hard It's just the creatives involved, after a point, were more focused on having new elements feel more on brand. Yeah, it seems like there's a bit of a... There used to be kind of a bit of a sort of a balance. I don't know. It's a, it really just depended on the, depends on the creator, for the most part. Here's a question from Bounce Bloom. Oh no, Eggman has mastered the dark art of scruffing hedgehogs. How does Sonic, Shadow, Amy, and Silver react to being scruffed by Ivo? Sonic and Amy are displeased and <laughs> flustered and a little frustrated by it. Shadow's just going to hang there, but he makes it clear that the minute you let go, you're done. <laughs> and Silver's just kind of hanging there going, oh no, I've been scruffed. Whatever could I do? If only I could move things with my mind. Oh, here we go. And then Eggman's out a window. <laughs> if only I could levitate and teleport. You can go far ahead, did you, genius? <laughs> Shadow can also just teleport, to be fair. To be fair. But it's more but... fun to be threatening. <laughs> it's, it's more fun to be the tiger with the tail. Yes. Or, sorry, having the tiger by the tail. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Do it to, do it to Breezy. Hmm. Yeah, she would murder you once you let go yeah. and she's just kind of counting up the minutes which is how long you're going to suffer once she's free all <laughs> of these are bad decisions pretty much pretty much it's a bad idea overall 
KB has a question. Does Trip speak? I noticed that in the Fangs Big Break comic, Trip doesn't say anything. Did she just simply not have anything to say, or is she more of a silent type like Bark? It was more of a directed keep her mysterious before the big reveal type of thing, but she can you she can speak. She she can talk like everybody else. Oh, well. That's weird. Maybe they should be consistent with that in the games. Well, mm. she's only appeared once and it was a silent game. What do you want? I'm talking about Sonic, yo. Oh yeah. Well, he talks in the classic comics, so in the, yeah, in the comics. <laughs> Let's not dwell on this, shall we? Uh, I am going to dwell on it, Ian. You know how Sonic fans are. We dwell on all sorts of stuff. <laughs> For decades. Chaos Sonic 1 has a question. You were given the chance to continue the Mega Man comic and finish off your Mega Man 4 adaptation on one condition. You have to adapt the Lion episodes of Ruby Spears' Mega Man. What would you do to adapt it? The public has to know. Fever dream. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still not entirely sure what the Lion episodes are of Ruby Spears Mega Man. I am not nearly as familiar with that cartoon as a whole as I should be. I've not seen all of it, so I do not know. It but I've heard it's very bad. It involves anthropomorphic villainous lion men. Okay. With special beam eyes. I mean, that just sounds like Mega Man 12. <laughs> I mean, regardless, why, I, why I honest, if I had to, if I was back into the corner, I did have a contingency plan that rock would suffer some kind of like coolant malfunction and the heat would fry his brain processors. And he would have this fever dream equivalent that involved the lion men. And okay. We did it. We acknowledged it. We don't have to actually make it canon and we move <laughs> on. with our lives. Uh, okay, fine, fine. As long as it's less canon than Mega Man Soccer, I'm good. Comic the Hedgehog has a question. Maria storms into Sega's office and demands a new contract. She's tired of getting shot and insists on being an active part of the story for once. Shadow backs her on this and threatens to go work for Nintendo if Sega doesn't give Maria what she wants. They instantly cave and then pass the buck to you. Now you must bring Maria back permanently and make her a Team Dark member who contributes something no one else does. How do? Uh, oh no, a time stone fell off Little Planet and it hit Shadow in the head and he woke up on the Ark and when he's like, how do I work this thing? He and Maria get teleported back right as she was supposed to get blasted and thus the timeline's preserved because everyone thinks Maria's gone but she's really moved forward in time and she has literally no one else to rely on at this point so she joins team dark and she is the wholesome heart and soul of the team that dispenses friendliness and she gets a sick black and red version of her gown and rides a motorcycle okay also time travel cured her for some reason i mean why not it's a time stone it does all sorts of stuff and she like invents her own version of the heel cannon that also fixes things so as team dark <laughs> creates mayhem she just goes up behind him and cleans everything up <laughs> could you guys really rain back on the collateral damage please <laughs> no maria says this time i want to shoot back <laughs> <laughs> with love oh and vengeance okay good yeah <laughs> okay so she's like the tf2 medic Goes around yeah, shooting, I mean, healing yeah. at people <laughs> and things. <laughs> Let's go practice medicine. Yes, yes. Why did that sound so threatening, Maria? Maria, come back. Put down that scalpel, Maria. <laughs> I like her. She's feisty. <laughs> Here we go. Conga. Let's hear with a question. By some miracle, Sega has made you assign teams for a Sonic Heroes 2. Given the same speed, fly, and power dynamic, who are your picks? What would you call the teams? Why mess with what we have the first time around? Well, would you add any? Team Hooligan, maybe? I mean, the Hooligan, sure. Um, if we were to... Yeah, that's the that's the lazy answer. Let's let's mix things up a little bit. Uh, okay, I fine. We've kind of done something like this in the past. But like, let's swing Amy over into the power part of Team Heroes. I mean... She loses the speed distinction, but she's had a lot of different def definers over the years, so why not? That hammer can smash things. Power type it is. 
<laughs> and cream and big they get to sit this one out it's a school night anyway <laughs> so knuckles needs a speed and flying partner so mighty and ray mighty's gonna hang back and let knuckles be the muscle this time around <laughs> just for funsies make him feel a little bit better <laughs> let's see what happens Hooligans, why not? Give us team metal for pity's sake. Metal Sonic, Metal Knuckles, Metal Tails. Or Tails just, Doll. Just yeah. throw the throw Tails Doll. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that's worse, where it's just like dangling through the air, lifting them through unknown means. Yeah. Making horrible slurpy, slurpy noises as it goes through the air. That's awful. I like it. <laughs> Another suggestion I'm getting is Silver Blaze and Amy on the team. Uh, yeah. Who would be what though? I mean, I guess <laughs> Blaze would be speed. Silver, be... silver could be fly, and Amy can be power. I guess. Okay, sure. I mean, I, you could swap them out, and Amy's speed and Blaze's power too. Either way, yeah. I mean, there's there's all sorts of possibilities, but I mean, we've talked about this before, so uh, why don't throw a uh, Sage Orbot and Cubot in there? Sage <laughs> is flying. <laughs> Okay. They roll along on top of Orbot for speed, and she just like hurls Cubot through things for power. <laughs> That's so adorable. And yet terrifying. <laughs> Launching projectile. My name's Cubot! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's, that's, that's too good. She would be way too OP. <sighs> All right. If you have any more suggestions for fun heroes teams, put them in the comments below. CTF Eologist has a question. You don't have to tell us specifically what it is, but is there a definitive plan for Bean and Bark post Fang the Hunter issue 4? Or are they floating free agents without a defined place in the universe that will have to be figured out down the line? You'll just have to wait and see. Although, I do know of something. Say with me now, children. One, two, three... Hashtag knowing smile. <laughs> <sighs> we can't have nice things. Only Ian can have nice things. None of the rest of us are not allowed. No, I can't necessarily have them. I just know about them and then have to be quiet about it for interminable amounts of time. <laughs> Sounds like a skill issue on your part. Hashtag skill issue. If you can't let us know without actually letting us know. Although I guess that's what the knowing smile's for, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I have to vent somehow. Mm -hmm. When you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole net's mad at you. <laughs> uh, of course it is. It always is. What do you want? And we got one last question before we take a break. It's from Cool Christy one Hey, Ian, what if Scourge the Hedgehog says, Yo, my name's Scourge from the Coolest Gang, and if you don't like it, I'll shake my thing. I'll turn around, TP your house, and go, 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 and go, go, go. Is that sick or what to make a comic book about? Kyle, help. I'm missing a reference. I know <laughs> I it. I don't know if there's a reference or not, honestly. I'm just as lost as you are, honestly. <laughs> I just don't want to think about Scourge thinking is shaking his thing. This is <laughs> this is this... <laughs> my name is Scourge. I'm here to say I'm gonna TP your house in a major way. <laughs> I think everybody is confused. <laughs> Nobody knows what's going on. Now, uh, now this is a fair. fan idea. Now you can never have Scourge say this. Uh, what a shame. To be fair. If we were talking like evil Sonic early Archie Sonic days, you probably could get a story out of that. <laughs> I mean, it probably wouldn't be a good story. <laughs> but, Never said that. I, but you probably could get a story's worth out of that somehow. You could so. do it. You could do it. You could do it. <laughs> Something else we can do is take a quick break and we will be back with more Bumblecast. That sounds like a better idea anyway. We're back with more Bumblecast, and we're starting off with our weekly giveaway question. Follow us on our Twitter, our Tumblr, our Blue Sky, or our Facebook, and you have a chance to have your question answered on the show for free. 
This week's winner is Birth by Nightmare. That is a metal as hell name. <laughs> well, you know, instead of Birth by Sleep, you know. Yeah, but that so, it's so. so much better than that. That sounds like an actual metal band name. I know. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, we are Birth by Nightmare. We had to rock. Chugga chugga wugga. <laughs> no, I approve. I wholeheartedly approve. Good, good. I've always been curious about how would you would, how would you have approached the naming of Bass and Treble in their first appearance in the comic. In Japan, they're known as Forte and Gospel, keeping the music-inspired names. But in the West, they're known as Bass and Treble, which also keeps the musical theme instead of going with the Something Man convention from the earlier localizations. So how would you have approached this if you managed to reach the Mega Man 7 adaptation? Would the concept of Wily's fictional energy basnium slash fortanium play a part in it as well? Given that it was an English language comic aimed for the North American audience, I would be following the English localization. So it would be base and trouble. I would fit in as many nods and winks to Forte and Gospel as much as I could. You know me. Yes. But I would be following that path. So he would have been fueled by Bessenium instead of Fortenium. Fortanium sounds way better, though. I mean, it, it does. Forte and Gospel sounds so cool. Too, well, I mean, but... Forte and Gospel sound pretty cool, but I mean, I, I'm good with bass and treble, but yeah, Forte and Gospel, they're pretty sweet. But, you know, yeah. my hand's kind of forced on that one. It's bass and treble, so there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Danomancy has a question. How would you write for a fictional reality TV show based around the cast of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate? Somebody already did that. It was Brawl and the Family. I was going to say. <laughs> and it was great. Yeah, I guess I guess it's already done. You don't need to do it. I honestly cannot think of a better way to do it. I mean, sure, some of the characters were a little flanderized, but that's part of the fun. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, the only other avenue is like how Awkward Zombie does it, and she does it just as well. So I've been beaten to the punch twice over. Yeah, there's a little bit of weirdness with the Wibbly Brawl, just because oh, it's, was. you know, it's a little old. So well, I, some, things don't, some things have not aged particularly well. Sure, but that but, can be said of any media, let's be honest. Truly, truly, yes. As we said at the beginning of the show, you know, we learn, we grow, we change, we evolve. I mean, maybe you do. I'm still stuck here. <laughs> I keep telling you, man, you need to distribute your experience points. You're just letting them sit there. Yeah, well, I'm saving them up. Yeah, that's what they always say. You're going to use those healing potions later, too, I'm sure. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm going to be at the final boss, and, yep, yeah. I'll still have them. Oh, boy, 300 HP. That's great. <laughs> Daventhal has a question. In Sonic Adventure 2, Tails created his own synthetic Chaos Emerald. Not a jewel that just looked like a Chaos Emerald, but a legit, fully functional Chaos Emerald. One that Sonic was even able to use to perform the Chaos Control with. Um, hi, What? Why has Tails never done this again? Why has this skill not been used to solve, like, 95% of the problems that have arisen since? If Tails can just make Chaos Emeralds in his lab whenever he wants, why doesn't he, you know, do that? It has the same wavelength and properties of a real Chaos Emerald, but not the same power. And what you really need from a Chaos Emerald is the power. Uh, and the fact that Sonic is able to use it to perform Chaos Control is just, I don't know, Sonic's broken. He has protagonist powers. Sonic's OP. So it may be a question of it's incredibly costly to make it. I mean, he didn't even make it to be a chaos emerald. He made it to be a decoy. So yeah, there you go. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, something needs to be nerfed. To be honest with you, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, someone needs to patch that boy. He's way too powerful. He says he's just a guy that loves adventure, but ah, uh, hmm. Hmm. hmm, he seems a little bit more than that. Dawson the Dachshund has a question. Why have Sonic and Mario decided to sit out this year's Olympics? Did the IOC officially decide that their homes are not real countries? Was there a power-up scandal? Or do Mario and Sonic both hate the French? <laughs> See, I want to riff on this in a cute way, but we kind of know the answer now. Or at least allegedly. Ah, uh, the French. No, the Olympic Committee passed on it. Didn't want it to continue. Oh, wanted to invest in an NFT scam thing to further promote the Olympics, which is yet another reason why I just have no interest in them anymore. No, no, no. Also, Donkey Kong tested positive for bananas. So, you know, 
<laughs> for the first time. Weird. DDR Master M has a question. Knuckles and Cream Fusion, what do they like? Extremely pleasant, low-key badass with very long spines. So they have Mighty's personality, essentially, huh? Yeah, I guess, more or less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get some crazy glide distance. That's true, yeah. Flapping their uh, echidna bunny ears. I was thinking very, very long spines. Maybe it sounds like a bunch of rebarb in the wind. <laughs> Ouch. What's their name? Uh, Cream with a K. <laughs> Crackles? <laughs> Crunkles? No, no, no. Crinkles. Crinkles. Yeah, all right, crinkles. <laughs> it's kind of cute, unassuming, and then they break your face. <laughs> There you go. Domino has a question. There's a classic Sonic artwork that shows him reading a book with a glass of champagne next to him, which has me thinking, can Nermies just go to the shop and buy alcohol and cigarettes with no trouble? Do they need their own form of ID or something? Can Tails just go to a bar and get poop-faced? Clearly, that's just sparkling seltzer. Or grape, grape juice. juice. <laughs> Ginger ale. Obviously. Clearly. And the reason why he's in a wine glass is he hasn't bothered to wash any other dishes. It's the only clean one he had. <laughs> Where does he get dishes from? He doesn't even have a house. <laughs> it's, it's whatever was in the house he just happened to crash at. <laughs> but what about the smoking? Who has, where have you ever seen smoking in the Sonic series? Honestly. <laughs> You say this like Tails didn't totally smoke up in Adventures of. Which was proven to be no good. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a PSA to not smoke. That's true. <laughs> oh, man. But it did happen. It was Grounder it was, was, Sonic, Grounder Sonic was the smoker. The yeah, okay. <laughs> Grounder says, give me my smokes. <laughs> <laughs> Double L has a question. What do you do when a story simply isn't working? Like you're in the middle of doing an editing pass, are absolutely sick of your story, have stepped away and come back, and it's still not clicking. Any tips for identifying the root problem in this case? Now, what you can do is look at what it is specifically that you're hung up on and say, okay, why isn't this working? Don't look at it in the context of the story as it is. Zoom out and look at it as like a component within a machine. What is it about this that isn't working narratively? Is it character motivation? Is it within the logic of a plot line? Where does it bump? Why is it causing friction? And then just like analyze it and pick it apart you lose the artistry of it you lose the fun of writing but that's how you can sometimes just dissect it and find out how to make it work the easier way and the arguably more painful way start over you you've wanted this thing to work it ain't working and you are so deep in the weeds you cannot see why it isn't working start over like, don't even look at the draft to preserve those one or two good turns of phrase you have. It's done. You're starting from scratch. And from that new beginning, you're going to think about it differently. And you may find that you got to that point and it worked. Or that point didn't ever even come up and you're good and you've moved in a new direction. Then maybe you can salvage a couple of things from that previous draft. But if it really is not working, if you've tinkered with this thing top to bottom and you just hate it, it's okay to throw it out. You can do that. It is allowed. What? How could you say such things? Do as I say, not as I do. Okay, fine. <laughs> just another little insight into the process. I am currently stuck on a project right now uh -oh. where I know where things have to go. I just can't make them fit. And there have been a couple of drafts where it's just like, no, the whole document has to go control all delete. So what I'm doing now is writing down the individual beats that I need to approach. And I'm going to tear up the individual pieces. I should just get no cards. That's way simpler, but I'm <laughs> going to have the individual beats and I'm going to have to like make a string board or something to make these things visible, tangible, organizable. Cause this thing has stumped me. And my normal approaches are not working, but 
I had to throw it out. Or case in point again, Drogoon. You know, we had a solid enough approach for the first pass, but looking at the pacing of it and how things were going to go and what we want to do long term, those 60 plus pages just weren't working. So we're starting over, which is terrifying because that was a <laughs> lot of work on Adam's part. But I feel like the new book one is way stronger for it. And we have a better foundation to move forward with. I, I hate the expression and it doesn't always apply, but keep it in the back of your mind. Kill your darlings. Cause sometimes that's what you got to do to move forward. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's a question from dove. If silver would appear in strong Badia, would he be seeking the Ghibli's trigger? Oh, he absolutely would. <laughs> Come on. Absolutely. In here. <laughs> I finally found it. The Ghibli's trigger. <laughs> in here. The Ghibli, 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 Ghibli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got the Ghibli's. Uh, Frozen Apple Juice has a question. You have to bring back Titan Tales for a new story, but you get to redesign him freely, physically and narratively. What is the new version like? Uh, narratively is the key word here because we don't have to do the multiversal tales fusion dance. It can just be a Titan Tales. <laughs> You can just say that that's the name for Super Tales. Yeah, that would be the easiest route, but we don't want easy. I know. Well, yeah, you Well, you don't. And I, I don't know if you do or don't. I can't always tell. You don't always make it. You don't always make it obvious whether you want to do things the easy way or the Ian Flynn way. <laughs> you know me too well. <laughs> I see this as one of two approaches. One, you keep the mysticism angle and you go minimalistic with it. Like instead of some giant no neck hunk of meat, you go like spiritual singularity. Like he is the chaos energy now, or he is just this individual of light and power with the insight to make things happen now. Go the whole nine tail kitsune thing. Why not? Or you keep with his mechanical inclination and Titan Tales is his mecha. There you it go. It's his themed Gundam that he's going to fight another Death Egg robot with. Perfect. Personally, I like that one more, but maybe yeah. that's just the mood I'm in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant robots. I mean, let's go. If Fang could have his own personalized giant mecha, Tails should have one. You know? <laughs> You're darned right. You're darned right. All right, Godzilla has a question. Speaking of giant robots and kaiju, I guess. <laughs> uh, continuing Sonic Spear in the park, but this time it's the Scottish play. Shadow has been recast as Macbeth, Black Doom, Mephilus, and Infinite as the witches. All the edge. So who would be the better Lady Macbeth? Amy, Rouge, Blaze, Whisper, or Maria? And who plays Macduff, Sonic or Omega? I want to be Sonic. Come on now. Uh, God, Shadow is Macbeth. <laughs> is this a dagger I see before me or a gun? <laughs> to die to sleep, the chance to dream. Ah, uh, there's the rub. And for Lady Macbeth, ah, Rouge, easy. Like, if anyone is going to conspire to kill the king to gain power and move forward, to convince Shadow Macbeth. That sounds cooler than it should. Shadow Macbeth to you know, go through <laughs> with this. Dude, let it be, Rouge. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, the, the hilarious stunt casting is to make it Maria. This character who is known for being uplifting and wonderful and nothing but light and goodness be the conniving, manipulating murderess. But I don't know. I, I can see Rouge first and foremost. Yeah, that makes a little more sense. <laughs> And Geo Knuckles has a question. From my last question, would Ray be added as the new playable character in Knuckles Chaotix 2 and 3? And would you still use Eggman as a villain or a change to Fang or a Heavy King? I don't remember the context, but it would be neat to see Ray come back in the context of Chaotix. Always Ray. Bring him in. Um, I'm not sure how his gliding mechanic would work with the sling ring thing, but I don't know. Not my job to figure it out. Don't worry about it. In the same way that Knuckles' is gliding does. Uh, yeah. But Knuckles is just like singular glide. Ray has to actually undulate. 
Yeah, know? well, you know, I mean, let, my hand let, hurt just thinking of it. Let the let the ring undulate the person around him. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I mean, that vector is the partner who got the world's largest yo-yo, just smashing everything. Sounds good. <laughs> of course, that's how I play. Charmy primary, vector secondary, fly infinitely, and just wrecking ball everything. There you go. Cheap but effective. Yeah. And villain, yeah, let you know, let's have the rogues gallery. Maybe focus on the hard boiled heavies. Maybe let Fang step up. I we could do just about anything. It's true. Could. Could. Question from Happy LGPK. What if Sega doesn't think that Sonic is the fast thing alive? They're wrong. I think you meant to say fastest thing alive, but I mean that's what the question says. It says fast thing alive, so he is the fastest thing alive. He is the fast. I will fuck you over it. He's the fast. Knife. He's the fast thing alive. Yes, Sega is wrong. Hearts thirteen has a question. Everybody's favorite tween two-tailed fox boy flies his way into the hypothetical th- season two of Sonic Underground. How does the two-part special play out? Partial basis for the special could be Sonic 2 Game Gear for Part 1 and Sonic 2 Genesis for Part 2. We kind of touched on upon this in another question at one point, and I liked the idea that, for whatever reason, the triplets get split up, and you would have an A-plot with Sonic and Tails together and creating their signature bond. Yes. And Sonya and Manic together for the B-plot and kind of explored their dynamic as siblings, and then they all come together as one big happy family. Well, that's just wholesome. Too wholesome. How would you how would you ruin it? You know what? The underground fans have suffered enough. Let's just <laughs> let them have a good thing for once. Yeah, especially after you canceled their show. <laughs> I know it's it been was, so long. Does anybody still get that joke? I know it was you. I was there. <laughs> I saw you do it. I saw you flip the switch. <laughs> I mean <laughs> It has been a long time, but we still make jokes about it in the Discord chat, so, you know, that's one for them. <laughs> Hero Squad has a question. Sonic Boom episode time, it revolves around basketball. How does it go, and why is Shadow there? Is Shadow basketball real at last? <laughs> there would have to be at least one shout-out or staged scene to reference that. Of course. Uh, I imagine it would be just barely a game at all mostly just jokes and sight gags and characters sniping at each other and shadows there mostly to just put sonic in his place uh i guess eggman challenged the team to a game but all of his basketball bots are like malfunctioning <clears throat> yeah he didn't properly calibrate the harlem globe trotters routine so they're exploding on the spot <laughs> eggman dunks orbot there you go <laughs> <laughs> And then it looks like Sonic's team's going to just win handily, and then Shadow shows up, and Eggman's like, you did come after all! And, you know, Shadow styles on everybody else, and it comes down to a 1v1. Sonic versus Shadow looks like it's going to be very, very intense. And then they decide they're just going to play a game of horse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, horse can get pretty intense. It can, it can. <laughs> yeah. All right, one last question. Uh, and I can see this one's going to probably last a bit. You're gonna have Grab a, a chair, you're, folks. You're going to have a big answer for this one, Mr. Ian Flynn. This one's from Jara. I accuse you of being the kind of creative goober who gets deep into the weeds when working on a creative project and putting much more thought into it than it is entirely necessary. On that True. note... <laughs> on that note, with Drogoon... Which people can support by going to www.patreon.com slash drogoon. You, <laughs> you created a number of fascinating species such as Nerman, to Drof, to Hume, to Hume, Hume, Hume. Is that Just one Hume, but yeah. It's Hume, okay. I was going to say, that looks like a typo because I'm pretty sure it's only one Hume. I'm like, what? <laughs> Please tell us more about them. Geek out about the amazing details and thought put into them. Spare no detail. Well, I have to. Otherwise, this is going to be a three-hour episode. <laughs> I was going to say, this could go on forever. Correction, an additional three-hour episode to the hour we've already spent together. So <laughs> we'll, we'll be we'll be brief. We'll be quick. Uh, uh, will although we? the... Well, I... No. No, I won't. <laughs> but as a matter of fact, the patrons over at patreon.com slash Drogoon have access to a preview PDF of a in-universe storybook that does touch on some of this themselves. 
and you'll notice that there's a very distinct voice in how it's written but that's not part of the question the question is the predominant species of galaxant the, the cosmos of Drogon. uh so first we have the Aje from Ajeheim. they are tall bipedal kind of squirrel dog people to not put too fine a point on it they are arboreal in nature I uh, usually live in larger family groups and are have were already kind of inclined to a monarchy before Galaxon showed up and kind of meddled in things. But they are usually centered around their family tree, which is quite literally the tree that the family is raised in because these trees are mammoth in proportion. And the kings and queens of Ajeheim rule over the forests, which are the trees within their spheres of influence. They have full body hair or fur, rather. They have prehensile tails. They have very emotive ears. One of the principal characters, Foran, is an Aje, and they're just fun. That's going to be the end of every sentence, isn't it? It's just fun. Anyway, uh, <laughs> space we'll puppers. Yes. Uh, <laughs> then we move on to the Droth, which are living rock people, and they can have a wide variety of shapes and sizes and. Sometimes they have crystalline protrusions. Some of them are more rough cut. Some of them prefer to polish down to a gym like sheen. There's a whole cultural thing about that. They do not need to eat or breathe technically. And yet somehow they can drown, which is why water is clearly evil. And since most other organic things are full of water. <laughs> uh oh. And they are native to the realm of Drothheim, which is a, very arid geode rock of a land surface is nigh uninhabitable and below that more so, but that's because a lot of work's been put into it. The uh, pilot and chief mechanic in the story, uh, Joblin is a draw of him as well. We'll move on to a Shantiheim, which is a magical looking place uh, filled with massive mushrooms of various kinds. The Yggdrasil, Mushroom at the center of the realm caps the entire landmass. It is awe-inspiring. It blocks out the the sun and the sky. It's oh, I can't wait to see that rendered. It's going to be so freaking amazing. And the Enchanti themselves are inspired by fairies and the Fey folk, but are more decidedly insect vibed. So they kind of like the Droth have a wide variety of body types. Aje are generally with you can tell an Aje from an Aje. They're they're more kind of similar it's like coat color or pattern might be a little different but you see one Ajay, you kind of get the idea droth and enchanti are full of diversity in terms of uh body types and wings like any kind of insect wing is on the table for the enchanti and they have little uh frilled uh, antennae ears and large compound eyes uh and they can fly which is fairly unique amongst the critters then let's see we have Nurmenheim, which is just an entire ocean. There's there's smatterings of land to be had here and there, but what infrastructure is there is Drogon built and it's underwater and they don't quite know how that works. So they really hope it doesn't spring a leak because nobody's qualified to fix it. <laughs> and Nerman is a gross oversimplification of the peoples of Nurmenheim because there are mammalian ones, there's Piscatarian ones, there's... Uh, a gigantic variety of the different subspecies within them, but the ruling class goes, eh, they're all mermaid people, so they're Norman. And some of them are quite tasty, and that's been a problem in the past. Oh, no. But there's something I need, I want to sit down with at some point, because it hasn't really come up in the story thus far, or the <laughs> the main story, is just the Norman's worldview because it is so different from all the other realms because they are so less accessible than the others. But that's a whole other story. Uh, skip on over to Argusheim, home of the Orgusks, which is a primarily desert realm with oddly punctuated points of dense vegetation and water. And thus the varying clans of Orgus are constantly at war over resources and being able to claim land or even just someplace safe to be that isn't, you know, sandblasted every so often. 
and Galaxon likes to uh, you know, stir the pot every now and again so that no real solid unification comes between any of these clans. Mm, they're assholes. Anyway, <laughs> they are. I, I'm really looking forward to final designs on them because they're dino people. When you get down to it, they're avian dino people, and that should sell them by itself. And they are predominantly uh, matriarchal in their structures, but there's nuance to that as well, which we won't spend too much time on because my throat's starting to get a little raw. <laughs> and hop on over to Humaheim, which is the dominant realm within Galaxant. You know, they make the rules, so they get to say what's what. And the Humae are fairly basic human elven peoples. Nothing particularly stand out amongst them compared to, you know, the prance all tales and climbing ability of the Aje, or being able to swim and breathe underwater like the Nerman, or being made out of rock like the Droth. It said, though, that they were created in the image of the Drogun themselves, which is awfully convenient that the ruling class is made in the image of their gods, don't you think? But at the same time, Wind and Lissy, the sorry, Wind and Lissy, the protagonists of the story they definitely pass for Hume if they hide their more Drogun features. So maybe there's some truth to it. Why is there some truth to it? What is the greater connection between the missing God race and this race, which is part of the grander narrative, which I can't wait to get to, but that's like, I don't know, five or six books away and we haven't got the first one out yet. Anyway, <laughs> and the Drogun themselves are steeped in mystery. What, are they were they gods were they just a highly advanced race nobody's really sure they definitely look human in their base but they decidedly have uh, uh distinct eyes gold on black and tails and they have innate mana reserves that dwarf anything else living in the realms and mana reserves are your kind of innate mana pool your magic meter to really dumb it down most races can't do magic by themselves. The Enchanty seem to be a little more loaded, but their their realm is kind of tied to that. The Drogun could do magic by themselves. They are living batteries, and some of them more potent than others, and that can trend towards special uh, techniques and transformations that I don't... I mean, if you've seen the preview pages that Adam has been putting out on his Twitter I'm sure you can make the connections, but I don't want to pull back the curtain on that just yet. Somebody might actually be surprised by what Wynn can do. So, you know, we'll leave it at that. But <laughs> where did the Drogun go? Why did they go? Where did they go? When did they go? For what reason did they go? Cotton How did they go? Yeah, we, we don't know yet. Or you don't know yet. I know everything. I've been stewing on this for years. And that isn't to say that's all the sentient races there are you know cryptids and other i don't want to say lesser species because that's ugh, that's a loaded term uh non predominantly dominant species out there but with that many already running around we don't need to spend like the entire D D handbook of everything that's running on all the cosmos it's i think that's sufficient that, that, that's a good primer don't you think <laughs> yes yes it is I know you could go on for this on like, you know, a couple more days. Probably, but, you know. but I'm not entirely sure I breathed during any of that. So maybe we should cut it off here. <laughs> maybe, a little dizzy. Maybe we should. I guess so. I guess so. You did say that your throat was getting raw and then immediately make an excited growling noise <laughs> afterwards. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And for those of you who have been just kindly nodding along and have no idea what I'm talking about, Drogoon is the science fantasy epic that I'm working on with Adam Bryce Thomas. Uh, we're hoping to get the first book done this year. Go over to Drogoon.com. That's D-R-O-G-U-N-E for updates and all sorts of fantastic fan art. Oh, my God, you guys have been great. And head over to the Patreon to help support us because I'm paying for this production out of pocket. And it's a big book. It gets a little pricey, so that support is greatly appreciated. Yes. Go check it out. And that's it. That's all we got. Thank you to everyone who sponsors us over at patreon.com slash bumblecast, kofi.com slash bumblecast, and our YouTube members for supporting the show and sending in all your questions, especially you, Jara. Now look at you. You're <laughs> good. Be good to yourselves. 
be good to each other. And we will see you next time on the Drogon Cast. Bumble Cast! On the Bumble Cast. Bumble cast. <laughs> for now. For now, it's the Bumble Cast. Who knows what the future holds? So for the radio drama I'm planning. <laughs> Uh, you are, aren't you? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> early, early, early draft ideas. Got him. <laughs> uh, I mean, why not? <laughs> My favorite Sonic comics, Fleetwood. <laughs> <laughs> I love the Fleetwood Sonic comic. They never broke the chain. Ah. <sighs> Ah, <laughs> let's let's try to knock this one out super quick so we're not here all night, eh? Yep, can do. As long as you don't get hung up on some of these questions. You know that last one's going to take most of the recording session. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> like, I'm looking at this going, uh, maybe we can knock it out quick and do two. No, that last question on both of them is going to be here all night. Thank, okay. Thanks, Jara. <laughs> yes, thank you, Jara. <laughs> Sincerely, with a big old smile on my face. But we'll get there. That's what I make you. (laughs) We'll get there when we get there. Yes, yes. We're here forever. Yeah, we know. It's fine. I've made my I've made my peace with that. You've been listening to the Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at bumbleking.com and kngi.org. I know getting everybody together and for these things is like trying to herd cats, but can we not do it right in the Bumblecast block? <laughs> do they even know what a Bumblecast is? Uh, yes, unfortunately. Ah, shit. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe that's why they did it. They want to prevent. They want to stop. There's it. no stopping the Bumblecast. They want to they wanna stop the Bumblecast. Well, get we in line. Bumble knot. Get in line, buddy. <laughs> You're not the only one who wants to stop the Bumble <laughs> cast. There's at least like maybe half a dozen other people who want you to stop. <laughs> Tell you what, you pay me enough, I will. <laughs> if you want Ian to stop the Bumble cast, you better cough up as much money as the Bumble cast pays to both yep. of us. And then we'll stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you can give us monetary incentive to not do this anymore, we will. <laughs> we are easily bought uh, yes yes it has to be at least as much as we normally get though at least as much if not more on time for you know the rest of our lives because that looks like we're going to have to do this for the rest of our lives in, so per- in perpetuity <laughs> with uh keeping also uh inflation Yes, keeping up yes, with inflation, yeah. correct. Long term investment, but you know. Yes, if if you can, if it means you can shut up Ian Flynn, <laughs> you can do that. <laughs>